Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is May 14th, and today we're going to be taking a look at this dynamic system rolling in off the Pacific Ocean here. This is going to bring a severe weather threat to eastern Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and western Montana, as well as a strong frontal system across much of the region. We'll take a look at that in some detail. We'll take a look at the extended forecast as well and see just how long we're going to remain below average temperatures here for the Pacific Northwest. We'll see if any nice days exist on into our future. If you guys haven't, click like and subscribe. Subscribe. It really helps get the word out across Pacific Northwest. And thanks for those of you supporting me so far on this channel. You guys are awesome. You've made this all possible. Now, checking things out here, the SPC has picked up on this severe weather threat across portions of eastern Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana. Right now, just showing the wind and hail threat. But if this continues to show in the models, I believe they're going to upgrade this to a 2% tornado threat for portions of northeast Oregon and maybe southeast Washington, a little bit of Idaho by tomorrow. I'll be out chasing this event too, so uh, come along with me and I'll show you guys where I'm going to target during the day tomorrow. And you can see Pendleton, Oregon highlighting this hail potential, 1.5 inch hail, frequent cloud to ground lightning, gust to 60 miles per hour, and they do talk about the potential for some rotating storms also. Timing would be about 2 p.m. to 8 a.m. during the day tomorrow. Spokane highlighting this region as well. Now, for Seattle, you can see we've been below average temperatures since May 4th now, and really much of the month has been below average temperature. We're starting to get to the mid and upper 60s for an average high, and we're not getting anywhere towards that. Spokane's getting up towards the upper 60s at this time of year, and they're also not reaching that as well. And we'll look at that the extended here in a moment. Now, check this out. This is 100 meter wind speed here. I wanted to show you guys the system rolling in here through the day Sunday, bringing a decent frontal system to the coastline here. And as that swings through here on in through next week, another strong system will approach and bring some windy conditions to the Washington coast, the Oregon coast at times, uh, San Juan's, Whidbey Island, southeast winds up towards southern British Columbia as well. But we have a several days to watch this system as it rolls in here today. We're going to highlight our... Uh, we're going to take a look at the severe weather threat out here. So here we go, some rain during the day today. You can see that relaxed during the afternoon and evening hours for much of the region before the next system rolls through here and bringing some moderate rain with that frontal system during the day Sunday. And look at this, it pops up this highlighted precipitation. That's going to mark that severe weather threat through eastern portions. And we'll look at that in some more detail here in a moment. This is looking at the NAM3KM. This is the infrared satellite imagery forecast. So here go the high clouds for the next system. You can really see that well-defined front reach the coastlines here through today, Sunday, and put this into motion here. Look at this. You can see some of these tops fire up here in eastern Washington and Oregon. Supercell structures are possible, and there would be a tornado threat under this scenario. This would be... You know, we would need sun breaks to destabilize the atmosphere. That's what this severe weather event is going to hinge on. How much sun break will we get here during the Sunday afternoon time? If we get a few hours, it's going to be game on out here, and there's going to be some severe weather across the region. So we'll take a look at that in a little bit more detail here coming up. You can see the low-level moisture that does exist through tomorrow afternoon. So these storms could be surface-based, and they could be rotating. Now look at this convective available potential energy through the day tomorrow. Watch it build during the day here. Put this into motion. Look at some of these values going across the region. This was higher than when we got tornadoes a few days ago across portions of eastern Washington and Oregon. So we'll see how this develops. I'll be out chasing, so stay tuned for the latest and ride along with me tomorrow. Look at some of these significant tornado parameter values across the area too this is also higher than it was a few days ago so this is something to watch for tonight into tomorrow i'm going to check out these model trends and see if this exists can if this threat continues to exist this is updraft helicity kind of marks the track of the rotating storms tomorrow you can see these develop in northeast oregon move through southeast washington into idaho in the afternoon and evening hours tomorrow the her also agrees with the nam on the track of these storms tomorrow this is the sounding I pulled from Northeast Oregon. You can see good wind shear aloft, really good cape values here. As you can see, these toss would be up over 30,000 feet, maybe 35,000 feet. Good low level instability marked by the three cape here, which shows the low level lapse rates, meaning the surface is going to be much warmer than the air just off the surface here. So these parcels are going to rise, cause stretching, and they're going to be sheared nicely. So if this continues, there's going to be a tornado chance, as you can see in the potential hazard type here. Now, looking at the European also, this is Sunday system, nicely defined here on the forecast simulated infrared satellite imagery here, and you can see it fire up these big showers here 
through eastern portions here and move them into Idaho and western Montana eventually. Now this is looking at 18,000 feet. Actually, let's back this up a little bit. You can see the system rolling through Sunday. This is plenty enough wind speed here to cause supercell structures across the region tomorrow afternoon. And as we go into 5,000 feet, 850 millibars, check this out. As this system approaches, you can see we're getting westerlies here, southwesterly Saturday. But as the system approaches, look at these southeast winds. So we're going to have good turning the lower levels of the atmosphere, giving us that surface relative helicity and possible rotating storms. Now looking at the extended here, look, there's a system rolling through Sunday. Good agreement there with the models. And watch this trough drop down over the region here as we go through mid next week. So... We're probably going to stay chilly on in through next week and maybe a little bit of a ridge building at some point next weekend. The Canadians are showing this more than the European of the GFS, but you can see the European just really painting this trough, continuing to plague us on in through late in May here. So we, we might be setting some records here for May as we're already pretty chilly. And if we continue to bring these troughs through, we could end up as one of the top five coldest Mays ever here in the Pacific Northwest. Checking a look at the GFS here. Good agreement with Sunday's system. You can see it roll up there across Vancouver Island, and you can see the Gulf of Alaska troughing open up over the Pacific Northwest. Good agreement with the European here. Then it tries to build some ridging for this weekend before another trough looks like it tries to get going over British Columbia and keeping us in a tight gradient here. Would probably keep us cool and damp in this uh, situation here but we're getting pretty far out in the gfs's forecast gfs always tries to do this too look at this down here towards the gulf of mexico it tries to build these tropical systems pretty early in the system in the season every once in a while it's correct but right now the european's not showing that it's just kind of a funny thing that the gfs tries to do in the extended there so looking at the canadian model here there goes sunday system swing up towards the coastline Gulf of Alaska troughing opens back down over the Pacific Northwest, kicks it out much quicker though than the GFS or the European model and builds this ridge, which would bring us a very nice weekend next week. Look at the model differences here for next weekend. So we'll see which model wins out there. We'll continue to monitor that. And then you can see it's extended 10 days out. It starts to build another trough off the coastline here. So we'll continue to monitor that extended forecast day by day. Here's the temperatures for Seattle. You can see generally below 60 on through next week and maybe a little bit of a bump with some temporary transient ridging before the next trough settles over the region. This is looking at average temperature departure um, across the region here. Since January 1st, remember we did have some warm spells through January and February across the region. So that's why they're not too extremely below average. As we go into April 1st to May 13th here you can see this is much more below average so we've been pretty chilly through april in the beginning part of may here kind of highlights that this is percent of average precipitation we've been getting a lot recently but since january 1st a lot of regions are still below average in precipitation except for portions of southwest washington and kind of on the oregon washington border here a lot of portions are still significantly below average precipitation especially the most hard the most drought stricken regions here for east slopes of the Cascades into Oregon. So not everybody's just, you know, it's not been that great as you, when you look at it from January 1st on, if you were to look at this from April and May, it'd be better, but it's still below average for portions of the Eastern Oregon there, especially. So yeah, here goes our next system here off the shoreline here. It's going to bring a strong frontal system through the area tomorrow. And that's going to bring that severe weather threat through portions of eastern Washington, Oregon, which I'm going to be monitoring closely and I'll be out there chasing. So ride along with me and I'll try to tell you where exactly I'm going to target. I'll try to set up and watch one of these storms roll by here. And yeah, then on into the extended, we're going to remain below average all through next week. And then maybe there's some light at the end of the tunnel for next weekend, but not all models are agreeing on that at this point. So we'll see how those goes day by day. So yeah, tune in tomorrow. I'll be live streaming if I go out there and chase that. And I hope you guys are having a good day and enjoy this wet, cool pattern because at some point in the summer, we're probably going to wish we had it back. So anyway, I will talk to you guys tomorrow.